Hello there, welcome to a very special Greenock Morton weekly update as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. Scottish football is in suspension. There seems to be a lack of clarity and a great deal of uncertainty about the immediate future of our national game. Supporters want to know what's happening across the land, but more importantly, they want to know what's happening with their local club. To do just that, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the Chief Executive of Greenock Morton Football Club, Dave McKinnon. Dave, thanks for coming in today. No problems at all. Uh, what kind of week have you had? Well, it's been uh, it's been actually um, you know hour to hour, minute to minute at times, um, and actually looking at the strategy that we have to um, apply. Um, you know, there's there's literally um, we're waiting on decision making process. Uh, we fully understand the the issues behind no decision being made in the league, um, and we can talk about that later. But um, it's simply been just making sure that. We put in the, the plans that uh, the club continue and uh, come out the other end stronger. What's your thoughts on the general shutdown at the moment? It just seems to be, as I said in my introduction there, there seems to be an uncertainty and a lack of clarity about it. Well, I think the thing is that the the problem the SPFL and the SFA have got is that uh, this is driven by UEFA. Um, UEFA make the decisions on the leagues. Um, and I can fully understand that uh, if the SFA and the SPFL make a decision to end the league, then they potentially uh, potentially are at uh, risk of you know legal challenge by UEFA. So they have to take cognizance of what UEFA do. They seem to be kicking the ball into long grass uh, and saying we'll extend it. We're going to put it then. We're going to put it here, and, and that's not helpful. So I think that um, there's um, different um, tr- triggers for this from UEFA to say, okay, we understand that this season is, is over. Let's look at next season. Um, or indeed the, the government step in and uh, there's a white paper going through Parliament just now which will bring out powers that the government will have so they may then insist that football stops uh, and doesn't come back to a certain period so if, if that comes in then that's very helpful for clubs because they, we can then negotiate uh, where payments are you know there's a look to the media there's a lot of clubs and you know They've got self-interest, and I can fully understand that, and they're saying that they want the, the, the season void. Um, but in my understanding for prize monies to be paid out, then the clubs will have to know exactly how that's distributed. And that means you know, being placed, if you're placed in six, you get X amount. If you're fifth, you get the X amount. But if it's totally void, then how do they distribute the monies, the prize money? And that's that's... For me, that will be the key driver. That is the key, isn't it? Because, you know, Morton is a, a small club. We've always spoken about that. A local club, uh, pride of the community, etc. But, I mean, every club is facing real hardship here without getting this money through the door. Well, it is. And, um, you know, there's a bit of respite. We get a, a small amount from the SFA. You know, one pound, one point five million seems a lot, but it's distributed amongst uh, 42 clubs and based on certain criteria where you are in the club licensing. But it was very welcome and, you know, I think that uh, the SFA and the SPFL, you know, I've got great um, admiration for them because they're having to to fight through it themselves and uh, they're looking at every aspect of how they can help the club. So that's, that's, you know, very positive in the respect that uh, they realise that uh, the clubs, um, you know, certain clubs and all of us are in dire straits at times, you know, but we have to actually look at how we, um, we, we sort that. And part of the thing you were asking about this week, but part of the thing that uh, the board, Crawford Dre and myself, have been looking about how we can actually stabilise where we are position, look at the cash flow going forward, because it's going to be an extended period that we're going to have to cover, uh, and then put in steps to make that happen. So we've already got a plan in place, because you have to act very, very quickly, because you know there's there's no dragging the heels with us. Um, you have to look at costs. There will be some drastic decisions that have to be made, but the most important thing is the future of Green Up Morton Football Club, and I think that uh, everyone uh, buys into that. We're in uncharted territory here. Um, I know you have a good relationship with your insurance brokers, which is something a lot of people didn't really think about last week. Certainly. Well, I don't think that's going to be the uh, white knight rising over the uh, you know the hill. I don't think. I think that. Um, insurance companies like everyone else look at the small print. We've got a great relationship with them. We are trying to look at, um, you know, if we could implement uh, business loss insurance, but 
you know, inevitably, uh, I do believe that uh, the government may have to step in uh, and ask you know, these insurance companies to, to, to step up to the mark. That's going to be difficult because they've only got so many, many reserves and I think that their businesses will be under pressure as well. But we can only do what we can do. And I think the thing is that um, you know, what we're looking at and the plans we've got going forward don't include you know, getting money from insurance because mm -hmm. that will be a bonus. The importance, of course, of the relationship you've developed this season with Morton Club together. Where does that fit into the picture here just now? Well, Morton Club together, have, you know, they've stepped up to the mark. I think that, um, you know, when they came on the scene, you know, August, June, uh, July, August last last year, then it was an unknown. Uh, they've got over 400 members, and I think that's creeping up towards 500. Uh, they've delivered what they've, they've said they deliver. I think uh, great credit goes to the, the, the board at Morton Club together, and indeed the members of Morton Club together, because they've put in... You know, a significant amount of money to the club to pay the players' wages. Um, we um, will have to look then about you know how we encompass that, and because you know we've got players' contracts that uh, we're looking at, uh, and uh, but Morton Club together, if you you look at their contribution, it's great. And I think the thing is that um, I've, I've looked at other clubs and spoken to other clubs, and they've put out just giving pages. Now sure. for me, that's great, and you know I know clubs have. The Sports have stepped up to the mark, but the vehicle of Morton Club together to put it in, it's already organised. That should be the, the, the vehicle that the money's come into for the club because you know it's it would be transparent, uh, it's well documented where the money's come in and where they're now under their um, rules of association. But uh, that would be the, the, the vehicle that, that the fans should put it into because you know ultimately. Um, you know, these guys, um, for their members, they've got an obligation to, to ensure that the money's spent in the correct way. So, you know, um, I would say to fans, you know, if, if they are going to contribute, and many of them have contacted me and asked how, may, how they can contribute, really? it's been great. I mean, the, one of the things that, uh, in times of adversity, you see the true colours of people. And I think the modern supporters, you know, I think that um, to a man, They've stood up and they've said, right, okay, this this is hugely uh, important for us as supporters. Uh, how can we help? So, you know, I would say to them, you know, Morton Club together is a vehicle to do that. On a practical level, as you know, we've been doing these weekly interviews now for a couple of months. And we come in here and there's always a hive of activity. The camaraderie of the players having their breakfast and getting out to training. What have the players been doing this week? And, of course, the management team as well. Well, the players come in on Monday uh, and they played a a game, um, you know, home against away, so there was some classic uh, football in it and, you know, I'd, I'd a words with them and told them exactly what, what I knew of the situation. But, you know, the most important thing uh, in this period is to look after, you know, public welfare and, yeah. pu and, and public health because, you know, one of the things that came out the the SPFL and SFA video conference yesterday that Crawford and I uh, tuned into was the fact that uh, Dr John McLean, a guy that I've known for many, many years, who's the SFA um, head of medical, you know, he painted a picture that uh, is quite clear that, um, you know, this is going to be the long term, this is not going to be, you know, a, a month or so, so this is going to be three or four months before, you know, we've got any semblance of normality comes back into it because of the various things that people see in the media. So, you know, that's something that we're going to have to manage with the players. The players, um, what we've done, as you, you probably know and is well documented, that we've, you know, um, signed players extensions yeah. to protect the, the players and to protect the mm -hmm. club. Um, a lot of the contracts are out in, in June and we'll have to look at what we're, we're doing with that. And um, But ultimately, I think that, um, you know, looking at all these aspects of it, it's about being calm. It's about being focused, it's having a strategy, uh, deal with what comes from left field and then move on and, and tailor it. But you know, we're calm here, we've got some wonderful supporters, um, we've got Morton Club together putting um, you know their contribution in, we've got a great board of directors here, we've got no debt. Um, we'll talk about the Ray family maybe and Crawford Ray about their contribution because mm -hmm. you know that is significant and I think that you know 
over since my time at the club, you know, there's been various chats about um, you know the Ray family's con contribution in Crawford Ray's. Crawford Ray's contribution to this club is one hundred percent, and it's at times like this you see the people, the the, the, the true colours of the people. And Crawford Ray for me, you know, has has stepped up to the mark and he supported this club this season. Um, you know, one of the things that happens in, in football is, you know, it's changed because of the, the circumstances around Golden Casket and the shares. When I came into the club, I fully understood that uh, and agreed with it because you can't continue to, you know, um, trade with, with money that you don't have. Mm. So th the budget was cut, you know, we've worked through that. We're in a decent position in the league. We could potentially have pushed on. I don't think we're going to get the opportunity to do that. Um, but you know, one of the things that, that um, people from outside maybe think is the fact is that if you're wait, working on a break-even budget, then you're straight. You've got money to pay wages mm -hmm. every month. You know, Crawford Ray has stepped up and uh, you know put money into to the club to ensure that these these peaks and troughs mm -hmm. are levelled off. Because you know, um, when you look at the, the forecast, you know you've got games in. You may not have a game. You've got weeks' wages to pay. The money not have, may not have come into the bank, so who's going to do that? Who's going to pay the wages? So Crawford Ray stepped up to the mark, uh, and the Golden Casket have stepped up to the mark. So I think that um, you know it's great admiration to him and um, his business that they've done that. So you know I think that uh, you need strong people about you, and um, Crawford Ray's commitment to this club is one hundred percent. Clearly, there are wider public health issues much more important than football, which was once described as this magnificent trivia. But football at the heart of this community is still a very, very important thing, isn't it? Well, it is, and I think the thing is that, um, you know, it's not only the players and the management, you know, we've got a lot of wonderful people around the club. As you know, you come in here on a Saturday, you know, we've got a lot of volunteers. You know, Alistair Wiley that looks after the, the, the programmes sure. and half-time draws. Alistair McGregor that does, you know, the, the match announcer. Uh, you know the Gillen brothers that look after the the, the mask. It's Elizabeth that looks after the ball boys and ball girls. Stephen, who you know as you know floats about and helps with hospitality. And everything. So all these people you know have have committed to the club, not for financial gain because mm -hmm. they don't get paid. They're volunteers, mm -hmm. and I feel for these guys because you know they 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 look forward to coming into the club and being part of it. You know we've got Jane in the kitchen that that is. is Get, as you said, get the players, you know, the lunches and breakfast. You know, all these people don't have a centre to, to, to come to. One of the things that we're, you know, looking at, we've got a very vibrant community here. And the guys, are, you know, have gone behind the scenes and, and looked at vulnerable people, vulnerable supporters and how we can they can help them. You know, and I think that that's one of the things that we'll probably over the next um, two or three months look at and see how we as a club can contribute to the community and to our supporters because they're contributing to us so we have to put something back and I know it's something I've spoken to be the gaffer with uh, you know and it's um, something that we're going to look to see how can we help you know Denver Clyde community because they've been great supporters of the club. So in the final analysis the message is one clearly of optimism. It is I think the thing is that um, you know as I say it's been calm it's been focused it's been strategic, getting a plan in place and working to it. And you know, if things come in and they change, you alter that. But this is this is long term, Jerry. And I think that one of the things that um, you know, I think we'll see that uh, I, you know, would imagine that that uh, we maybe start in the earliest. I think we can start back as a club to get back to some kind of normality, maybe July, uh, and that's what we're looking for. So we have to actually manage those three or four months. In, in the correct manner and the correct spirit you know we're also looking at you know the logistics of this this stadium this wonderful stadium that which you know uh, eats electricity and uh, gas for for fun mm. um you know we, we we'll close this down that's that's that we're looking to do as many clubs will do during mm -hmm. that period uh, the staff um you know have been very supportive we've given them the, the, the opportunity to work from home so they've done that over the last week uh, and we'll again look at how we can, you know, assist the staff because this this is a, this is a great family, you know, and I don't like using the word about clubs, sure. family, but it is it's a, it's a it's a community within a community, and I think the thing is that, um, you know, we'll endeavour to, to to help people, but there will be some pain, 
because um, you know we the uh, come back to the thing is we have to ensure that this club comes out um, this pandemic and this situation in a stronger position um, and that's what we'll do and that's what we're all endeavouring to do and I firmly believe that um, Green and Morton will come out stronger and I think what we'll do is that we'll have a different attitude going forward because ultimately as you said public health is hugely important so you know it's um, f the football club you know is is an entity and it's got a great uh, affinity to, to the community and to the, the supporters but this is about public health and this is about looking after yourself looking after your family because uh, that's the most important thing in life so well Dave in the short time that I've worked with you I've never found anything less than candid so thanks for coming in today and possibly allaying the fears of a lot of Morton supporters great okay, thanks and thank you for joining us on this special edition of the Green at Morton weekly update as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. <laughs>